Well, hey everyone, this is Dr. Dan. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Engineering and Computer Science at Azusa Pacific University. And in this video tutorial, basically going to help you get started with Java. So this video is actually a kind of a refresh of my original video you'll find on YouTube. Uh, in this video, we're going to basically install Eclipse, which is uh, one of the most popular development environments, um, integrated development environments. And we're going to install the Java Development Kit, uh, JDK for short, uh, which is used to run Eclipse as well as just get you all the tools for Java and especially writing code on, uh, in Java. Um, finally, this is going to be done on Windows 10, although some of this process, a lot of it will be pretty similar to Mac, but specifically this is for Windows 10. I'm going to give you some shortcuts that just will kind of get you there a little bit quicker on Windows 10. And then finally, uh, we're going to do our, our first Java project. Now the reason I'm redoing this video is um, this video actually gets a ton of views still, uh, but what I found recently is that there's a few small kinks. Some of the software that we download has changed a little bit in terms of that process of downloading and installing. Uh, and I know when you are an absolute beginner, any little thing can kind of throw you off uh, the beaten path, so to speak. Um, I, I've done a ton of tutorials online, and I, I hate it when people skip steps or something doesn't go quite uh, on my screen like I did on theirs. So I really want to give you my best effort to, to give you um, the scenario that you're going to run into today. Um, with that said, and before I continue, I assume if you are just installing Eclipse in the JDK, you are probably a beginner. Um, or can can really benefit from learning Java from scratch or from an intermediate level. Um, so if you head on over to hellodrdan.com, you'll find um, a ton of free code I have available. Um, in the process of recording actual video lectures of recording code from scratch, but if you go over to my GitHub page, you can go through and see this huge syllabus of lots of different materials. So you can see everything from the basics of coding to functions and storage, advanced object-oriented classes, uh, file input output, memory organization, basic data structures, threads, GUIs, recursion, everything. And finally, I transition to C++. So um, I highly encourage you, especially if you are just getting started, maybe you're uh, doing, uh, getting ready to take a 101 or 102 type of uh, intro to programming course at a university, or maybe you're in a uh, AP Java course in high school, or even maybe you're just starting into a, a, a new kind of programming language as a professional. Um, you'll find some great resources here. Um, I've been teaching CS for years, years now. Uh, I've taught intro courses probably 10 to 15 times. Um, so I, I really make a huge effort not to skip uh, code or comments or anything like that. So anyway, um, what you guys are here to do is install Java on a new machine. So I actually do have a fresh brand new computer here. It has nothing installed on it whatsoever. So you should get uh, expect to have the same experience here. Um, so the two things that we're going to need are Eclipse. So go ahead, you can Google that. You'll find uh, the Eclipse website. Um, you can download it here directly if you want. Um, I'm going to download it somewhere else. I'll show you that in just a second. The other piece of software you're going to need is the Java JDK. Okay, so if you go and search JDK, you'll find uh, the, the top link is this Java SE Downloads. It takes you to Oracle's website. In the past, this is how I've always um, this is how I've always downloaded the Java JDK. Just kind of come here and um, find the highest LTS version. You can see 11. I'll explain that in a second. And you click download. And then you go ahead and you accept the license, and then you come down and you find the executable um, for your particular operating system, which is in our case is Windows. What you actually find, and this is one difference from that older video, is that uh, this is actually behind a, a login screen now, and this is actually a, a pretty new thing, I think, of as of 2019. Um, so it makes it a little bit more cumbersome. If you actually do a little bit of research on this Oracle SE version, you'll you'll find that it's basically uh, free to use for development. But if you were ever to actually use this in a production environment, you're actually supposed to have a license and pay for it. Um, so for that reason, I think people are kind of moving away, away from it a little bit, at least for uh, you know from just kind of testing and learning and development purposes. Um, so actually, the place that I typically download both the Java Development Kit, and um, again, what the Java Development Kit is, is it just gives you all the Java tools, allows you to compile code in Java and whatnot. Um, and I also get my Eclipse um, editor, where I download those, are from a website called Ninite.com. Okay, this will only work for Windows, but for Windows, it's great. 
So what you want to do is you want to go over to the development tools area and you'll just download this uh, JDK version 11, whatever the latest version they have on there is, and then you'll grab Eclipse. And this is a nice website because it'll basically uh, download any of these pieces of software and it will just install them without you having to go through all the menus and clicking yes and no and I agree. So go ahead and click get your night night and then that will download an installer for you and then go ahead and just run that. Okay, so while that's downloading and installing, I'll kind of explain a little bit about the JDK. So what is the JDK and what version should I download? Well, if you basically go on to Google and type Java JDK versions, what you'll find is this first link is like a Wikipedia page. And if you just go and look at the table, you'll kind of see um, all the different versions. A, a lot of people are on version eight. You'll see it has this LTS beside it. It stands for long-term support version. Um, and then you'll see some other versions that don't have the LTS. Typically what you wanna do is you wanna grab the latest LTS version. Um, you'll see some of these other versions, version 12 and version 13. Um, you can actually see like this one, 13 for instance, it's released in September of 2019 and it's going to stop being updated on March 2020. So a lot of these newer versions I think are only being supported for like six months. So you probably don't wanna get one of the newest versions because it might not be supported very long. Um, so whenever you happen to download this, you'll wanna, it's always a good idea to come and just look for the, the latest LTS version. Again, one nice thing about Ninite is they kind of do that work for you. You can see they basically had the, the 11.8. It's just such a popular version. So many people are on it, so they keep it there. But uh, for all practical purposes, you can go ahead and grab uh, version 11, and you'll, you'll be in good shape. Um, okay, so we are done with that. And at this point, you actually should be ready to go. Um, so we can actually open up Eclipse. Just double-click it and this will open up whatever version, the newest version of Eclipse is. So Eclipse, uh, well the JDK has all the tools you need for Java to write new Java code. And Eclipse is what's called an integrated development environment. Okay, so if I go online and type in something like Java IDE, you will find a ton of tools. You can see some of the top ones. Uh, Google kinda has a bunch of them up here. Uh, Clips pops up, NetBeans, IntelliJ, BlueJ, and so on and so forth. Um, you can get by with any of these. Um, Eclipse is a hugely popular IDE. I know IntelliJ is uh, very popular, kind of a little bit more modern, um, but they kind of try to get you into their paid ecosystem. NetBeans is kind of like an old school development environment. I, I like Eclipse. It's, it's a little bit heavy. It's a little bit slow. Uh, may not have quite as many features as something like IntelliJ, but again, if you get used to Eclipse, you can write just about anything in Eclipse. You can write Java, you can write C++, you can write um, Python code. I've done all of that in Eclipse, so it kind of prevents you from having to learn a whole new uh, software environment or IDE environment uh, if you want to switch languages. So um, with that said, what I would recommend at this point is um, creating a new workspace. So you can see it kind of just have, puts it in your user's drive. What I typically do is just go to browse and then over here go to this PC and then go to your C drive. And I would typically do something like this. Just put a new folder in your C drive and call it uh, maybe whatever your name is or something. And then go in there in that directory, create another folder and call that something like code repositories. Okay. And then in there, go ahead and click something like uh, Java. Okay, so then we'll go ahead and we'll select that folder. Okay, and then you can go ahead and launch your workspace. And you'll see if I actually uh, go there in my file explorer, you'll see it's kind of creating some stuff behind the scenes for me in my file explorer. When you first start up, uh, Eclipse is gonna show you this welcome screen. You just go ahead and close that. And what you'll see is uh, a few windows here, and I'll explain these as we start kind of creating a project and writing some code. But over on the left, you'll see uh, create a, a Java project, which is, which is actually where we wanna start. So you can click that, create a new uh, Java project, 
This is a kind of a newer feature. If this isn't here for some reason, you can always just right, well, I guess uh, when there's nothing there, you can't right click. Um, but typically you can say like file new Java project that way if, it's, if that's not there. Anyway, let's go ahead and say create a Java project and we'll give this a project name. So my first Java project. Everything else you should be able to leave as is. So use the default location. It's basically gonna um, create this project in your code repository Java folder that we just created. You can see it's gonna use the Java 11 um, JDK. Um, and from there, we just go ahead and click finish. Um, now it always says discourage module name. By convention, module names usually start with lowercase. I typically say don't create. Okay, so what that's going to do is just going to give me a source folder with nothing in it. So you can see in my um, file explorer over here now, I just have Java, my first Java project, and then you can see a bunch of stuff kind of behind the scenes, but the main thing is in this source folder, there's nothing in there yet. Okay, now the other thing you see over here is this JRE system library. Okay, now I'd, I do want to go ahead and point out if you are on the, the 99 install, make sure that you got the JDK, okay, which is different from the JRE, the Java runtime environment. What's the difference? If you're just running Java code that other people have written or, or Java programs that other people have written, you only need the Java runtime environment. But if you're actually creating your own code and using the compiler and whatnot, you'll need the Java development kit, which has all those extra tools in it. Um, so just wanted to point that out in case something's not working for you. Or you'll usually, um, this you'd find that out eventually. Um, now what the library is, it just has all these, uh, all this Java code that you can use in your program, essentially all the kind of the, the background stuff that kind of gets you going um, in Java. So anyway, what I'd want to do is I just want to right click on my source directory and just say new class, okay? And again, I'm just going to title this whatever I want. Make sure that you are in the name fold, uh, field and not the package one, the name one. Okay, so I'll just call this um, my first Java program or something like that. Okay, so just give it the name, leave the package blank. The only other thing that you need to make sure that you click is this public static void main. Okay, so that'll allow this program to actually be runnable. So I'll go ahead and click finish and you'll see it'll basically give me a very simple program. It just has a class name in here and then it has this method which is just the entry level. Basically what uh, Java will do is it'll look for a a method that looks exactly like this. It'll look for this, these particular characters, main, string, args, and it will run whatever code is in there. So what we can do, for instance, is we can type out system dot out dot print line, P-R-I-N-T-L-E-L-N, open, close parentheses, and then in quotations, hello world with Dr. Dan. Okay, so whatever you want to type in there, go ahead and save that. Uh, you can do Control S on your, your keyboard, Command S if you're on a Mac, or you can always click the Save button up here. And then what you want to do, you'll see this green Play button up here. Go ahead and just play it. And you will see down here that your console says, Hello World with Dr. Dan. So we just ran our first Java program. Congrats, give yourself um, a pat on the back. Um, so now what I wanna do is kinda just show you a little bit about Eclipse, not very much. We'll kind of unpack this in future videos if you kinda continue on. Um, but a few things I just wanna make sure that you don't lose sight of. One of those is the package explorer. It, this is kind of where it shows me all my different code files and whatnot. If I wanted to create a new program, for instance, I could come over here and say new class my second Java program. Okay, do that public static void main. And then again, I'll do system.out.println. I am now a pro. Okay, so go ahead and save that. Now I can 
run this one. Okay, so you can should be able to kind of jump back and forth between those two programs. If for some reason this doesn't work, uh, there's a few, there's a number of reasons why it might not work, but one thing you can try and do is this little black arrow by the green button. You can typically come down and say run as Java application. And if everything's in order, then it, it should basically pick up that, that file and run it. Um, but this package explorer is kind of how you can navigate. Let's say you actually close these files, you can kind of come and find those files. If for some reason uh, this isn't here, you lost track of it somehow, you can always get these windows back by just going up in uh, Java to Window, and then Show View, and then you'll see um, Package Explorer. So it kind of can get it back that way. Same thing for the console. The console is what's actually going to show us uh, what's printing out. If I close that for some reason accidentally, you can always get it back. It'll actually come back if you just play your program, it kind of pop up, which is nice. But again, um, you can just click Window, Show View, and then Console. Okay, Problems is another um, great one if I for some reason have an error, maybe I deleted the, the T. Um, the problems will show up down here. It'll say the method println is undefined. So it kind of gives me an idea if I double click that, hey, there's something wrong with this. It doesn't recognize this print line. Okay. All right, and that's pretty much it. Congrats again, you have successfully installed uh, a Java development environment on your machine, which included installing the Java JDK. Uh, included installing the Eclipse integrated development environment. You created your first and second Java programs. Um, and I, again, I would encourage you if you want to kind of continue on or see some really great examples of code really starting from scratch, um, continue on with us in the next video. Uh, we'll actually show you how to download all that code from um, hellodrdan.com and the GitHub repository and really actually show you how to at least uh, run it so you can kind of either uh, follow along with me or right from scratch or uh, teach yourself some of those things as well. All right, thanks.